Good morning, traders. It's Friday, November the 9th. Taking a look at the charts, we got the equities market pulling back this morning, which is more or less what we were thinking from yesterday. Market got overbought. Uh, we saw panic, uh, panic buying in the market or greed buying, whatever you want to call it. And uh, overall, everything was kind of just pointing to some type of pullback. And if you look at the daily chart here, you can see we were right into resistance. These pre this previous high is doji candle where price reversed down. And, and here we've got uh, yesterday was a breather. Today, another little bit of a breather. We're coming down to the five-day moving average, which if this is a high momentum uh, recovery, we should see the price bounce off this five-day moving average and continue to move higher. And uh, that's much like what the natural gas is doing. Uh, to the upside is like what crude oil is doing to the downside when you're in a strong momentum move the five day moving averages if you're above it it's a buy a buying opportunity if you're below it it is a shorting opportunity so the market is pulling back to it uh, still got a little ways to go to actually get down there maybe another day it trades through it or maybe it dips intraday uh, but overall the market is is pointing to higher prices over the next week or so now if we take a look over at the bond market uh, bonds kind of testing the, the lows here, having a little bit of a bounce. But again, we're more bearish on bonds. Uh, we're more bullish on stocks. So they're kind of going to work in inverse direction, as I think here. If we take a look over at, uh, let's pull up uh, the price of the dollar index. You can see here we had that pullback two days ago, bounce off the support trend line. And what we want to see is it break through here, not saying it's going to, but we'd like to see it break through. And that would trigger a pretty significant bottom in the uh, in precious metals. Now, if we take a look at the chart here, we got a short term cycle moving to the upside. So we could very much so see the dollar hold its ground here, hopefully kind of stall out. And when we have this shorter term cycle, potentially putting in a bit of a top plus this negative, uh, this longer term cycle pulling down, we could see it start to collapse and break this green support trend line and start a new move to the downside, which could trigger precious metals. But as you can see at this point, very much so a technical bounce right off support, uh, the support trend line and these previous highs here where uh, they are going to act as uh, support when you come back down above them. So taking a look at gold down eight tenths of a percent this morning, kind of fizzled right back down to the lower end of its uh, short term trading range. If we were to just look at the price action here, we've got uh, this trading range right here or through these th these highs. And now we're kind of in this upper trading range where it's trying to just hold its ground. We'll see how that unfolds. But it does uh, have kind of a downward bias here for another week or two. Anyways, what we've been kind of expecting. Looking at silver down just over 1%, again, fizzling right back down to the lower end of its range, kind of picking up speed there. This looks like the type of uh, price action where we might see it flush out a little bit lower, uh, but I do feel as though we are getting close to a significant bottom in precious metals, but it's all going to hinge around what the U.S. dollar does, uh, and we need that to break down before I think we see a big move in the precious metals sector. Looking at uh, GDXJ, kind of fizzling out, still kind of trading sideways, making a series of higher lows, and uh, more or less we're letting it just kind of work itself out until the dollar figures out what uh, uh, if it's going to break down or not. Looking over at Bitcoin, here is the futures chart of Bitcoin. It has a nice pop the last couple of days. If we zoom out in the price action, you can see nothing too significant. It has broken this short-term uh, pivot high. It broke it uh, a couple days ago and then reversed back down yesterday. Today, it sold back down. Again, we have a downward bias with the cycles in in Bitcoin. It's up near short-term resistance. So uh, if it breaks the 6,000 level, then we could be uh, on for a very significant decline in Bitcoin. Looking over at energies, natural gas continuing this high momentum move. We talked about how it has this huge pop and it's just simply consolidating to the five day. If we throw a Fibonacci extension on here, we can get an idea of where that upside target is. We go from this low up to this high, depending where we want to go. We can go based on closing prices. That's the more conservative uh, price action and go down to here. This will give us our upside targets. Uh, of where uh, natural gas can go. So on a very conservative basis, it's actually hitting the 100% measured move uh, as of this morning. If we go to a more kind of extreme, we go from the candle wick lows to the candle wick highs. And go all the way down to these lows. You can see where the next upside target is. This should be more or less the, um, the range where it should uh, probably find resistance and potentially top out. This is kind of the 
upward target box of the, the very conservative upside target and the more extreme upside target based on intraday spikes and reversals. Uh, so that's kind of where we are and pretty much there today. Uh, we'll see how it, if we can get some type of reversal candle in the next couple of days. We have our cycles topping out. Could be a great opportunity for us to see price come all the way down. There's a huge gap window here. I don't tend tend to trade or look at gap windows and commodities quite the same as equities. They're a very different animal um, and the way investment money rolls in and out of them. But there is a gap there and we have a cycle high and a target. There is potential for it to come all the way back down into that zone. Looking at crude oil down 1.7%, continuing to flush down. It has yet to give us a reversal uh, pattern in the market. We are uh, still seeing it really flush down. And some of the biggest moves happen right at the end of a trend. And that's very important. Just like over here, price is grinding up, grinding up. And then you get this huge explosive pop right at the end before you get a huge reversal. And here we've been trending down in a very strong way. We got down to the support zone. And here we are now opening up, expanding in price, getting large volatility. Our next downside target here is going to be around this 57 area that if it flushes all the way down here, we could very much so get a, a very strong technical bounce back up to the 62 and, and potentially uh, way beyond that. But at this point, you got to be very careful. And this is the this is the one of the hard things about trading is when price comes down to support, if you don't wait for a reversal, Sometimes you get some of the biggest losses right at the end and you get shaken out here only for it to reverse and a few days later it's above where you were and the market is great at really shaking things up and um, that's what we're looking for now is some type of reversal candle down in here. A lot of damage is being done and we'll get into an oversold uh, technical bounce level once we get a reversal and it could be could bring us back up just to the 66 or area, maybe the 64, which is where we've got some pretty significant pivot areas in the market, pivot, pivot highs, pivot lows, kind of a breakdown level. So that's what we're looking for going forward. That's it for now. Talk to you in a bit. Bye-bye. <laughs>